Welcome to The Connor Mack Show, and today we're going to be talking about Stephen Curry and how he gets his points in the Warriors offense. So three main ways. First is a split action. Steve Kerr stole this from Greg Popovich and Phil Jackson. Really great action. The next is floppy. A lot of down screens, a lot of movement, and also Steph Curry's self-creation, the isolation, the pick and roll, off the dribble stuff. But first, it all starts with the split action. So we're going to see a pass into the post and an off-ball screen to get Steph Curry a very quick three-pointer. And they'll run this several times a game where you know Draymond will set it, and when they had Kevin Durant, he would set it. They sometimes even set it with Clay Thompson or whatever guard is on the floor at the time. Um, Looney will sometimes do it as well. But really, it creates um, a three-on-three dilemma for the defense, right? So instead of just one-on-one defending, it forces three guys to really have to communicate um, and really pay attention to what's going on because it puts so much pressure um, on your defense's communication because it can break down at any time. And if it does, you know, your second laid off that screen, um, you know, Stephen Curry, he doesn't need that much time to shoot. So Steph is really, really good at this. They run it sometimes in the corner. Uh, They can change the angle of it. It's just something that they can use a lot to catch the defense off guard. Um, You know, you can also cut to the basket off of it. So it'll sometimes look like he's going to set a screen, but he actually dives at the basket. So you'll see this a lot where there's a lot of variations and wrinkles off of it. Really, really great cutter to the basket. Um, Something he doesn't get enough credit for is his general ability to read passing angles. And if the defender's overplaying him or top blocking him, um, you know, he, he does a really good job of recognizing that, like right here, getting the floater. Um, but yeah, I mean, Steph is really good at analyzing three steps ahead on any play. You'll see that, you know, right here, the defender's cheating at the three point line. So he cuts back door and you won't see him dunk it a lot, but you know, you will see him cutting. And for some reason, um, a lot of defenses really still feel the need to try to face guard him at all times because really they don't want to you know give him access to the wall but he he's added a lot of new creative ways to get open in spite of that um he's killed portland with that he's killed utah um and it really you know with more offensive weapons on the floor it's going to be harder to do that you know once clay comes back and other pieces but he can also be used as a screener so you see there the defender's trying to block him from getting to the three-point line he's able to just seal him off and go straight to the basket um, they'll actually run him in the uh, pinch post action from the split a- into a down screen for a three-pointer, as you'll see here. Um, he, so he's really able to play both roles, not just the guy that's you know getting the screen set for him, but also being able to set screens for other people um, and then roll off of it into a three-pointer. It's one of the things that, you know, as a guard and you know, as the smallest player on the floor most nights, uh, you know, not a lot of guys will be able to do that. And his angle change off of screens is really great, too. So you're going to see the defender try to cheat the screen. He's going to move back into the three and get it to go. That's a, that's a really underrated part of his game. Um, but the next thing I want to show you is a, is a horn staple. It's called the, the uh, elevator play, which Steve Kerr uh, took from Greg Popovich. They used to run this for Danny Green a lot in San Antonio. Um, and they haven't run it as much as they did under Mark Jackson. But it's just a really, really creative set that can get a shooter like Steph open. They've also ran it for Clay. Um, the Spurs really love to run it at, for a corner three, um, or at least close to the corner. Uh, but you'll see some of the different variations that the Warriors use for this uh, elevator play out of horns, where the doors close, wide open three, um, and then a foul on the screen. But the, yeah, they've ran this a lot more in the past, um, and teams have started to scout it. But uh, it's a really great way for shooters to you know get open, uh, keeps everybody engaged. You can disguise it really well. Because there's just so much movement, um, you know. There's one screen, and then everybody's looking at the ball, and then off the ball, he pops out, hits it at the top of the key. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have to have really good passers uh, to do this. It has to be timed well. Um, but a lot of the times, it's a really, really great out of bounds play, which I'll show you. Um, but yeah, I mean, Steph, you know, credit Mark Jackson for using this, but also credit Steve Kerr for you know, finding ways to make this useful. You know, Steph's going to curl off here for a corner three. Um, but as you're going to see coming up, it, uh, it'll it be a great out-of-bounds play to use too. And, and sometimes Steph doesn't get the shot. You know, they're going to run guys around everywhere. You know, Clay might get the shot. They might dump it down because everybody's so focused on the shooters. It just really depends on how the action develops and what the defense is focusing on. Like right here, uh, baseline out-of-bounds play. It's kind of a weird angle to inbound this ball 
can get stolen really easily. Steph's going to curl, and then they're going to get a three. Uh, still a really difficult shot, um, one that he and maybe Clay could make. That's it. But um, as a baseline out of bounds play, it's definitely really dangerous. Again, you're going to see both of them curl, and then Clay's going to get this three. But what's funny is that in the next clip, the Warriors actually ran this play to win a game against the Boston Celtics. Warriors looking for the lead with a shot clock at 10. Curry, three. Go! They ran the elevator play. And watch the coach in the top right. He knows it's coming. They scouted this. They still get it off, and he's just slamming that piece of paper. I mean, it's just it's a really nice action. But this one I'm going to talk about is the uh, floppy set where you're going to see you know Steph come off of down screens. They'll they'll run two shooters off of down screens on opposite sides of the floor, like you see here. Clay will come off one side. Steph will come off the other. It's a really nice action because um, it forces you to pay attention to both guys. Um, and, and yeah, they, this has been a staple. I mean, this is probably, if you want to talk about one play that defines the Warriors other than the split action, uh, this would be it. Um, you know, interchangeable bigs to set screens. You need really good screen setters. But uh, yeah, they both set screens for each other. Um, sometimes Steph and Clay, but a lot of times it'll be the center of the power forward. But now what I want to talk about is Steph Curry's ball fakes, off the ball movement, and shot relocation, okay? This is the type of stuff that separates him from guys like Damian Lillard, James Harden, is his ability to give up the ball, realize what the defender is doing, and then still score anyway. So, you know, this is a playoff game against Houston where, you know, Clay's going to filter out. He sees Jason Terry's going to cut off the three, cuts back. Nice floater over Dwight Howard. And it's not just floaters. I mean, he can relocate and pull up at very difficult angles. And right here, he breaks Kawhi's ankles off the dribble, and he doesn't even have the ball. Like, just the separation against probably the best perimeter defender of the last decade is something that, you know, really only he can do. Um, you know, the ball fakes, you know, the clever footwork. You know, here he's going to give up the ball. He's going to kind of lull the defense to sleep like that one clip earlier and then cut back door for the and one. You know, his conditioning to be able to, to do this, I mean, it's, it's really impressive because most guards – just don't want to keep moving this much and nobody wants to defend a guy like this because it's super challenging and taxing so that's why a lot of defenders will switch off onto him they're gonna have multiple looks but I mean this is just something he's been doing his whole career guy cheats the screen he cuts back door inside for the layup and you know his ability to pump fake filter into the corner for three uh, it's just you know this he's been doing this his whole career it's just in Steve Kerr's system um, he just gets more opportunities to do it because there's more spacing on the floor. The lineups are better. Um, and that's a nice little fast break trigger where Draymond Green will dribble to a specific side of the floor and it'll cut back door. There's another give and go right there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, good passers from the top of the key is important, whether it's Draymond or Bogut or whoever. Uh, this is a really nice play, too. You're going to see the defense is occupied by clay cutting. Steph's going to try to get that same floater like earlier. doesn't happen, but he, he moves to the corner. Clay recognizes that, and he gets a three. So the guys around him need to be intelligent, too, to realize that, you know, once Steph gives it up and he's running towards you, you know, that's a trigger for you to set the screen. Like here, he gives it to Looney, back to Steph. Looney knows the screen, and he hits the three. I mean, the he killed the Rockets with this so many times. Um, you know, he's moving back, and, you know, these aren't, open shots i mean so a lot of these you know he 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 can shoot it contested but um you know he's one of the best contested shot makers of all time so yeah so right there he moves he doesn't get the layup but he's going to keep moving keep moving wait wait and then he's still a threat i mean you got to have somebody attached to him if not i mean he's going to get these looks moving screen or not you know um but yeah so the warriors like to get these quick actions to where you know, Steph gives the ball up. The screener's looking to pass it back to him. Like, the screener's not trying to score there. Like, right here, Jordan Bell. He knows, like, this ball, as soon as I get it, it's going back to Steph. And he hits the corner three. So, the big big men have to have awareness. Um, they got to be unselfish. You know, some bigs might just shoot that shot. But, you know, with Steph running the baseline, you know, they, you just don't. I mean, because the best shot is is still to come. But as you're watching the games, you may not recognize this because, you know, you might be watching who has the ball. But the real fun with the Warriors is, you know, not who has the ball, but who's off the ball. So as you're going to see Steph right here, you know, he's 
he's bodying up and then he's going to make a hard cut around the screen the defender takes a really bad angle and he's going to hit the three so yeah as you're watching the next game you're going to see here this is an out of bounds play into the corner so they can run this action anywhere on the court whether it's a live ball or a dead ball but as you're watching the next warriors game you're going to really want to pay attention to how he moves off the ball and if guys try to double him like right there you know the warriors will know how to build the team to where you have shooters that can punish the defense for doubling uh so yeah so steph is not only proficient with his off the dribble movement but you know recognizing when to force it when not to force it like right here gives it up shoots it but on that last clip like he knows like sometimes his teammates are going to be open and if i'm doubled you know we're gonna have a four on three opportunity or somebody's gonna have a wide open three so it really just depends on the situation um you know draymond does a really good job of you know looking for him uh you know this play was a little disjointed and if all else fails you know he can just hoist one of those right um, you know, this is from this season right here in this fast break situation. He's going to give it up. He's going to find a spot. Um, and, and that's the thing about Steph is that you have to have a body on him at half court or else, you know, he's going to find a space to get open. But here's the real dilemma with Steph. It's in the pick and roll, right? So there's three defensive strategies to use against Steph. You can go over the screen and have your big play drop coverage. You can trap him with two people like we just saw or switch the defenders. But the problem is, is that when you play drop coverage, like Joel Embiid does here, he can pull up from so far behind the three-point line that it really, you know, it's it's really terrible defense because the big's not going to get out to contest him, and the guy going over the screen is just not quick enough, or, you know, or is at the risk of fouling him, and it's just not good. And if the if he does come out, he has the ability to break the big down off the dribble um, and, and really get a nice shot. This is kind of like a quasi-switch right there. And he still drains it over Embiid. So you have to have the right personnel to switch. Because if you don't, like this is kind of your only option besides trapping. And we're going to see why trapping doesn't always work either. But yeah, I mean, it depends on what big you have. But you know, if you have one of the best bigs like Rudy Gobert, who's really good at shot blocking, that skill isn't necessarily transferable, you know, 35 feet away from the basket. So, um, you know, Steph killed the Blazers with this in the playoffs when they try to play Anis Cantor and Zach Collins and drop coverage. It really just is not a great strategy to use against Steph. Um, you know, but here we're going to see why trapping necessarily isn't great either. So he gives up the ball. Clay gets a three after he gets passed around. Uh, it's really not a great strategy because it scrambles your defense. Once you trap, you have to filter. And the Warriors are so good at moving the ball that it isn't necessarily the right thing for your defense to use at times because... The Cavs were, the, you know, the poster child of trying to trap Steph. But as you see, the defense is all over the place, and he gets a wide open three. Again, we see the trap. Draymond is a really great passing outlet, and he gets a wide open dunk underneath. You know, we see the the, the Pelicans try to do it. Um, you know, inside, you know, Steph's getting the ball back, back to Clay for the three. So if you trap, I mean, it really has to be a hard trap, and you also have to account for the passing outlet. Or else stuff like this is going to happen where, you know, Draymond makes a nice layup. But it just causes everybody to have really slow rotations. And if you don't get back in time, um, the ball may find its way back to Clay or Steph. And, you know, you're going to end up giving up that same three uh, that you would have given up if you just use a def different type of defense. And right here, gives it up to Draymond for the lob. Um, but so the Warriors try to combat this trapping by setting a screen with, guys like clay thompson because if you trap him if you trap steph then clay's wide open for three and that's not what you want so they'll set clay as a screener instead of a worse shooter like bogut or or draymond to try to force you out of that trap and they did this really successfully against cleveland um, where sometimes steph gets left open or clay gets left open and you know some of these clips are misses but it just shows you like the great shot quality that you can get every time down the floor with steph as you see, Clay gets a great look, he airballs, but um, more often than not, the defense will get punished for this because the defense can anticipate the screen and then Steph just pulls up. But um, yeah, it's a really great counter for that. And they actually use this with KD too, but KD was more of a roller. And of course, you don't want to have a wide open roller being Kevin Durant. But um, yeah, so defenses stopped really trapping and they wanted to switch. But if you switch, beware because Steph you know, can really make you look silly like he did on this play. 
you know, little crossover has Gobert spinning. And this is where you, you don't want Gobert guarding on the perimeter. You want him where he's good in the paint. But it's not just, you know, centers too. I mean, he gets KD on a switch here. This is in the playoffs, 2016. Steph rises and fires right over him. So you again, you have to have the right personnel because if you have, you know, Ed Davis or, you know, Rudy Gobert or Joel Embiid trying to guard this, um, that's also not great either. So you have to have you have to have switchable wings. Um, San Antonio had really great personnel for this for a while, um, but but if you don't, it's just not it's not not a usable strategy because even this like this is still great defense by Surge, but you know there's only so much you can do when guys are just making really really tough floaters like that. Um, so yeah, just beware if you want to switch because Steph's really a master at uh, you know the separation. Um, and, and the ability to get a shot either at the rim or a three. Um, and it can be guards, it can be wings, it can be centers. Um, but one thing that we do know is that, you know, the repertoire that this guy has um, can be matched by very few around the league. I mean, Kyrie's probably the closest that can you know take advantage of these switches and finish at all three levels consistently uh, and still have that kind of ability to move off the ball. But, you know, the Rockets ended up getting sent home because they wanted to put Ryan Anderson in the game. And so Steph just relentlessly attacked him. And here's another KD closeout. Goes right by him inside, lays it in for two. Um, yeah, I mean, Steph just, you know, his floater game, his layups, uh, you know, that might have been offensive goaltending, but we're going to ignore that. Um, but his just, his just ability just to get any look he wants. You know, he's killed Clint Capella over the years with switches like this. You know, P.J. Tucker, he's dancing on P.J. Tucker. And, I mean, this isn't just, like, the run-of-the-mill regular season stuff either. I mean, this is playoff series where, you know, guys have scouted him. I mean, they've scouted all these actions, but, you know, whether it's LeBron or KD or Kawhi or whoever, it's just a tough cover. Um, you know, right here, LeBron plays really good defense. Um, you know, it's, he's not always going to guard Steph, but Steph just breaks him down off the dribble. So when you play Steph... All five of your guys are going to need to be able to defend him at some point because plays like this are going to happen. Even if your best perimeter defender is guarding him, he can still make shots. So as far as just general isolation scoring, I mean, yeah, he can do that too. Um, as you're going to see in some of these clips, you know, especially late in the game where he can just break you down one on one, hit the step back three. Um, you know, like nobody's business. Um, you know, he's been doing this. You know, a little step back move you know, for a long time. And it's, it's really, uh, he's really brought it out more in recent years just because of the lack of, you know, offensive threats around him. Um, and especially recently, especially against the Clippers, you know, that little step back three to get open. I mean, he's gonna be able to do that for a long time because it really doesn't uh, re require a lot of energy and he doesn't use it all game, you know, with somebody like James Harden, who relies on the step back several times a game, you know, he may only do it, you know, a couple of times when it's necessary. But, you know, he can also do stuff like this. He can create stuff out of nothing. Um, probably one of his more famous plays, which, you know, happened to take place on my birthday, too, which was pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he's just been known for this. Uh, you know, he's, his ability to break people down, especially like this crossover with Chris Paul. Um, it's a really great part of his game that he doesn't overly rely on. So, you know, once the playoffs roll around, he's not super easy to stop. He's not a ball stopper. Um, you know, he can still break people down within the offense um and you know when the matters are necessary he can just take over and really make some of the best defenders in the league look really foolish like this little hesitation you know fake shot uh, in and out on drew holiday so yeah i mean steph is really really hard to guard um as you guys have seen in this video but what he's really going to be known for when his career is over is plays like this they do have a timeout decide not to use a curry way down to So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you want to see next and be sure to subscribe and hit that like button and share it to any of your friends, whether or not they're Steph Curry fans or, or not. So yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.